And so our next speaker is actually uh, Carolina Rice from uh, OneSkin, and she's in California. So for her, it is actually in the middle of the night. So um, I really appreciate that you could uh, get here, Carolina, and, and we are very excited about hearing uh, about your company and what you do. So please, whenever you're ready, just uh, go ahead. Great. Uh, thanks, Martin, for the invite, and thanks all the organizers. I'll be sharing my screen. Um, let me know if you can see it. It's loading. It's perfect. Okay. Great. Great. So, good morning from California, everyone. Uh, I'm Carolina, the CEO and co founder of One Skin. Uh, we are working on the development of sinotherapeutics as a new class, class of molecules to prolong skin health. We believe that uh, skin may be one of the first tissues to benefit from this approach since it allows for a topical application, has virtually no contact with bloodstream, and therefore may be a safer and fast route to the market. And skin is our largest organ, and yet it has been largely overlooked in regard to its influence to overall health and longevity. And skin aging is not only associated with several skin disorders, but may also be one of the, one of the most important drivers of inflammation. aging. So, Based on the size of it, this organ, uh, skin deterioration can heavily influence the levels of inflammation in our body, uh, which can contribute to, to several chronic diseases. So we believe in other groups that by keeping our skin healthy, we can maybe prevent or delay the onset of several age-related diseases. So in order to treat uh, skin or prevent skin aging, we need to go to the root cause. And it's well known that the accumulation of senescent cells, it's associated with aging several tissues and, and this accumulation is also associated with several age-related disease. And skin is no different. Um, signs of skin aging such as wrinkles, sagging and skin cancer have been associated with the presence of senescent cells. So we hypothesize that by preventing or decreasing the accumulation of such cells may be an uh, efficient strategy to promote skin health. And very similar to what we see in, the, in our healthcare system, most of the approaches focus on skin rejuvenation today. They are targeting the symptoms of aging and not aging itself. And ironically, several of these approaches, they can uh, in fact accelerate aging instead of preventing or promoting a rejuvenation effect. So our approach is fundamentally different in the sense that we come from this, un this angle of understanding the biology of skin aging first, and then we validate uh, target and develop interventions to focus on this target and then uh, we validate this in 3D skin models and we also use algorithms to measure the efficacy of this intervention. So one of the main advantages of working with skin is that we are able to replicate um, human skin in the lab uh, therefore, our platform, it's only based on human models. So we, we believe that these are the most relevant models for translational science. It allows for less uh, failure due to toxicity effects. And as you can see, the human 3D equivalents that we uh, grow, they can mimic the main structures of a natural human skin. So here, we are representing the, the main layers of the skin, the derms, uh, the epiderms, uh, up to the stratum corneal that forms our main 
uh, physical barrier that protects our skin against water loss and uh, infections. But we are not only growing human skin, we are also replicating the skin aging process. And we do that by using cells derived from donors of diverse ages. So newborn, young donors and elderly donors. And we can see how much the skin changes both in the structure, uh, in, the in the morphology. So we see that the epiderms gets thinner of, over time and several changes happen um, in this morphological organization. And we also characterize those models in terms of gene markers related to aging, inflammation, which are going up and other markers related to proliferation and extracellular matrix that goes down. So next, we have also developed a skin-specific uh, molecular clock uh, to validate the interventions that we are developing and other interventions that are currently in the market. So uh, methylation markers uh, is one of the most accurate markers to predict biological age, but tissue specificity heavily influences its accuracy. So we have uh, trained our, uh, our skin-specific algorithm using samples derived from more than uh, 500 skin samples. And we were able to uh, reach a higher coefficient correlation and a lower uh, error if we compare to other, skin mo other, other molecular clocks that are not skin-specific. So here, when we use an external data set that were, was never exposed to this uh, algorithm and we, the results, it's a uh, lower error when we compare to the other molecular clocks. So this uh, tool is a very powerful tool, not only to uh, validate skin health or skin diseases, but also to validate skin interventions and see how much we can decrease the skin biological age. So the third piece of our platform is a screen as a cell-based screening platform to identify the xenotherapeutic compounds. Uh, we are using two markers of senescent cells. One is broadly used that's uh, beta-galactosidase, and we can see in cells from neonatal, young cells and elderly cells that we increase the expression of this marker. And we are also evaluating ATRX for Psi, that's an enzyme that's required when the cells undergo senescence. So uh, this enzyme accumulates in foci in the nuclei and younger cells we have um, higher percentage of cells with a low number of ATRX for Psi and these chains, this distribution chains uh, with aging. So uh, similar to what have, has been published before, we have screened by Hike and collaborators in 2017. We have screened more than a thousands of compounds and we chose to start with peptides since peptides are commonly used in cosmetics and they are a biological molecules and they tend to be safer. So we can see here that our hits uh, were able to reduce at least 25% in the level of cellular senescence. And after several rounds of optimization, we could see a decrease up to 40% uh, in the burden of cellular senescence with our main lead compound OS1. So this molecule was also validated in more, in at least three different donors uh, derived from donors varying from age from 71 to 90 years old. And we also validated the effect of OS1 in this UVB uh, induced senescent model. So here we are using cells derived from three, two donors, 30 years and 70, 90 years. And upon UVB exposure, we are increasing the level of senescent cells in both uh, cell lines. 
And then with OS1 treatment, we can reduce the accumulation of such senescent cells, uh, both in the 30 years and in the seven to nine year donors. We can also see here uh, through flow cytometry that uh, um, we induce, we increase senescence uh, with UVB treatment, and we reduce almost to the control level when we treat it with OS1 peptide. So in order to elucidate the mechanism of actions uh, in this UVB-induced model, we have seen that we are mainly modulating uh, the DNA damage and oxidative stress pathways. So we can validate that upon UVB treatment, we are inducing uh, this DNA damage marker that's uh, gamma H2AX phosphorylation. And this, this marker is reduced upon the treatment of OS1 in both cell lines. And then we see that other markers downstream to this path is such as P21, AKT and DAO to NEF kappa B, they are also uh, down regulated uh, upon, treat upon the treatment of this peptide. So, our peptide is, is probably working by increasing DNA repair and then decreasing the accumulation of inflammation, which would uh, continue to drive the, the formation of new senescent cells. So finally, we were combining the three pieces of this platform. So here we have an old skin uh, that was treated with OS1. And we, here we have compared with retinoic acid. That's one of the main ingredients used in, the, in several anti-aging products. What we can see is that OS1 not only improves the skin uh, morphology, so we characterize the health of this skin through a histological uh, grading system, and we can see that OS1 improves the skin health uh, and also decrease the molecular age here by assessing uh, the methylation markers and running our algorithm, we could see a larger decrease uh, if compared to retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is also commonly associated with inflammation due to, due to this peeling effect. So we can see the upper layers coming out. And this is also correlated to a lower score in the skin health. So next, we have formulated this peptide in a topical product and we have applied uh, in skin explants. And similarly, we can see an increase in the epidermal thickness uh, here highlighted by this purple area. Um, and this same effect was not observed with retinoic acid. We could also validate the decrease of the molecular age uh, through the methylation analysis by treatment with OS1 in skin explants. So before we move to clinical studies, we needed to assess the safety of this peptide. Uh, so we have followed uh, FDA guidelines for personal care products, and we have performed several studies related to safety, including mutagenesis, karyotyping, chromosome aberration, up to a human test, that's the uh, human synthesization test where we test in, on 50 patients and we have not seen any um, side effects and most of these studies they were performed by third party CROs. So this makes us confident to move forward to clinical studies and here we have designed um, a, a clinical studies with 22 patients where the they were treated for 12 weeks with a formulation containing OS1, and we have seen a significant improvement in several parameters of skin health, but also the skin appearance. So one of the most interesting data of this experiment was an in the improvement of the skin barrier on average of 15% that's related to the main function of our skin, uh, in addition to other uh, markers of skin uh, appearance such as elasticity, firmness, wrinkles, 
and overall appearance in general. And very interestingly, this data correlates very well with our in vitro data in terms of increasing epidermal thickness, lowering the amount of senescent cells, inflammations, and biological age. So since we are targeting uh, cellular senescence, which is a very common um, driver of aging, we believe that OS1 has applications beyond skin. So here we have done a proof of concept study with C. elegans, uh, and this experiment was repeated three times, and we could see an increase of 16% in the lifespan. But more interesting than that was that these, the worms that were treated, they were more active throughout their lives. So, uh, this is related to health span, and it's something that we are all interested. So here in the control, we can see that the worms, they are active on the first day, but then they start, uh, they decrease their activity over time. While in our group treatment, we could see this activity still high, even in later stages of life. Here yeah, I have just a, a clip of this video showing, uh, and this study was performed by NEMA Life, where we can track the, the, the worm's mer, uh, movement. And again, we can see the ones treated with OS1, they tend to move faster compared to the control. Uh, I would like to thank my team uh, and to present you guys, the founders, we are four PhDs um, working the field of stem cell biology. Alessandra CSO has her PhD in skin regeneration. Uh, Marianne is our brain behind the, uh, our algorithm and RNA seq analysis. And Juliana has also a lot of exper experience in IP and uh, stem cell biology as well. And we can count on brilliant scientists. Uh, Leah was a former postdoc of Brian Kennedy that just presented and Kali has also worked with them. Um, Bailey did her master with uh, Vittorio. And now we are working our, expand our marketing and operations team uh, as we move towards to the market. And here I brought some of our collaborations that are top leading scientists in the aging of uh, skin, um, aging related disease, and, um, and also peptide discovery. And that's what I brought for today. I thank you all for the attention and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much, Carolina. Really stimulating talk. We have a number of uh, questions on the Slack channel, and I will take uh, ask some of them that have been uh, uh, upvoted. So we have uh, one from Matthew Jansen, who asks, is OS1 reducing the number of senescent cells through reversal of senescence, or decreasing the number of senescent cells through cell death in the UVB experiments? Uh, this is a question that we are still working on validating. We see in general uh, prevention of the accumulation of senescent cells. So what we see is that our peptide uh, improves DNA repair. So these cells don't go to, don't get to the senescent stage instead of needing to kill the senescent cells. So it's more in, in the UVB model is more a prevention um, effect. All right, very interesting. So we have, um, we have time for two more questions. Uh, the next upvoted one is from Debbie Teuber. Could the cells be preventing DNA damage signaling but accumulating DNA damage with the OS1 peptide? So could they be interfering with ATM signaling, for example, or something like that? I guess. Yeah, we are. We have not seen. Uh, and yeah, we, we are still evaluating those pathways, and uh, we have not seen an increase of uh, genes related to uh, increase of DNA damage yet. Okay, thank you. And the last one is from 
Marco de Maria, who is uh, asking or saying the past studies have shown that with age, human skin accumulates mainly senescent melanocytes. Is this a concept to keep in mind for the use of skin explants? Definitely, yes. We can also include melanocytes. Um, they are primary, primary melanocytes are a little bit difficult to culture in vitro, but we also have seen that it's a combination of, uh, you know, the intercellular uh, signaling among melanocytes, fibroblasts, and keratinocytes. All right. Well, thank you very much, Carolina. And you have a number of other questions on the Slack channel, so you can log on to the Slack channel, and then you can write. Maybe you can have some sleep first, uh, or you can write. But, but thank <laughs> you very much for joining. I'm to address all the questions uh, yeah. later today. Thank really you. Really appreciate you joining, bye and uh, bye -bye. sleep well. See you. Bye bye. <laughs>